In this video, we will walk through brake caliper mounting and adjustment for cantilever threaded post. Make sure you're watching the caliper mounting and adjustment video that matches your brake type. If you're not sure what you're dealing with, watch this video. Typical tools required are a hex wrench for tightening pinch bolts, grease for the brake frame fitting and the spring, torque wrench to ensure proper security, combination wrench for pinch bolts and for pad setting, cable cutter for cutting the cable, and thread locker for the mounting bolt. The cantilever brake pivots on a boss on either the front fork or the rear frame. Because of the pivoting, we want grease around the outside of that post. Any excess grease will just be shoved to the back. Because the mounting bolts are a fairly low torque, it's a good idea to add a drop of thread locker inside each boss. There may be different hole options for our return spring, an upper, a middle, and a lower. If you select the uppermost hole, spring tension will begin quite early and it's a very powerful return spring. The lowest most hole, the spring tension begins much closer to the rim. It's a rather weak setting. Generally, the middle hole is a good place to begin. It's a fairly modest torque on these bolts. Typically between four to six Newton meters is completely adequate. On the second caliper, it's important to select the same mounting hole you did on the first brake. Before we start adjusting the pads to the rim, we need to understand spacer selection. On this other bike, we have a caliper arm with correct and incorrect spacer selection. On the threaded post, there will be a wide and a narrow set of spacers. This helps position the caliper arm as the pads strike the rim. Ideally, we want the caliper arm close to vertical as the pad strikes the rim. The rider's right side here would be in a good position. The rider's left side, however, we can see the wide spacer is inside. This caliper arm is sitting outboard. On the threaded post, you only have two options. So for this bike, we really want the narrow spacers inboard. The wide spacer should be outboard. Back on our example bike, we can pull the arms toward the rim and have a look at the positioning. We can see we are not parallel. We'd rather they'd be here approximately, but they're coming too far inboard. So in this case, I'm gonna to need to take the spacer, the narrow spacer that's on the inside, move it outboard to get a little better position on our caliper arm. We begin by loosening the mounting nut. The nut comes off. The thrust washer will come off and the two spacers will come off and the arm releases the pad. The pad has these convex concave spacer systems. There's a dished or a concave washer here. A convex washer goes against it. We need to remove these and in this case we place it with the wide spacer. Concave is here and then it would have convex against it, and then this would go against the caliper arm. The flat surface of the arm gets the flat side of the spacer. Concave is here, and then it would have convex against it. The back side of that is flat for our thrust washer. And then lastly comes the nut that will hold it all secure. With the spacers moved, with the white spacers inboard, we can see the caliper arms are in a much better, much more parallel position 
as our pads strike the rim. There are different designs to connect the left and right caliper arms. We'll complete the rest of the procedures here using a link unit. At the end of the video, we'll install the straddle wire carrier and show where the process is slightly different for these systems. Before we hook up the link unit, let's discuss pad placement. The brake pads are gonna to come to the rim and slow us down. If the pad hits flat, there's a tendency because of the play back and forth for the whole brake to squeak and howl as we brake. The squeal can be reduced if we have the front edge, the leading edge strike first, and the back edge is gonna have a slight gap. We can get that with our convex concave washer and a nice shortcut is to use the shim at the back edge of the pad, which we can pull off later. We install a shim, rubber band in our case, and we turn it to its working position. Repeat the process on the other side. We're now ready to attach the link unit and the primary wire. We install the primary wire through the access hole out the housing. Then we engage the wire out the top so it's correctly lined going straight up. We attach the quick release end into one arm. We attach the cable through the pinch mechanism of the other arm. Because the threaded post uses a convex concave washer system, we get some self-alignment of the pads. If we take a BT2 or fourth hand and draw the pads to the rim or pull hard with your hand, we apply some mild force so the arms are up against the rim. Again, with this mild force, we're going to secure the pinch bolt. And when we loosen the nut, we can move our height, we can move the vertical face because it's pressed against the rim. The stud is gonna to tend to self-align with those convex concave washers. Once we're happy, we're going to secure the nut. We will repeat on the other side, getting good height, getting the front edge and back edge even, securing, the shims are removed. And we have a slight gap at the back. That is our toe. Next, we said pad clearance to the rim as felt through the lever. This brake is too tight. We barely touch the lever and we have pad engagement. If we tried to undo the quick release, it's impossible to get that off. So we have not enough slack in our cable system. On this example bike, we have no barrel adjuster, so we use the pinch mechanism to fine tune our pad clearance. This other bike has a barrel adjuster at the brake lever. Unscrewing the barrel adjuster away from the brake lever effectively lengthens our housing, takes out slack, and tightens the brake setting. Screwing the brake lever inward effectively shortens our housing, relaxes the cable, and gives us more clearance. To loose a brake will mean we nearly contact the handlebar as our brake lever is pulled that will not give us adequate stopping power. So we use the pinch mechanism to fine tune our pad clearance. We're not hitting the handlebar. We can easily undo our quick release. And normally the setting on the front would then be duplicated for the same feel on the rear. Next, we center the pads to the rim. The left and right arms both have a spring. 
If one arm moves, it lets the other arm move. The arms really are moving together. What we're doing in setting the, the centering is equalizing the spring tension between the two arms. Here, we need to draw the left arm over slightly, which closes the right gap and opens up the left gap. In this case, there's a screw that increases tension. If I tighten this screw, it's going to increase tension on the left side relative to the right side. And then if it looks centered, it is centered. Give the wheel a spin and double check that still looks good and that you're also not hitting any tire on any part of the rubber. <music> Lastly, we would want to trim our cable and put an end cap on. We don't want it too short. We won't have enough cable to work with in the future, nor do we want it too long. I can cut about here. Put an end cap on, and that's going to give me enough cable to work with. And it will let me tuck up the cable back into the brake in a tidy fashion. And it's ready to go. Now we're going to go back and show where the process is slightly different with the straddle wire carriers. The straddle wire carrier attaches to the primary wire and will pull a secondary wire called the straddle cable. The height of this carrier is important. If it's up too high, it's going to be bad mechanical advantage. It's going to try and pull the arms up, not in. If it's down too low, the straddle cable is going to be collecting junk and mud and leaves. We want that carrier no lower than the bottom edge of the fork or the bridge on the rear of the bike. Approximately here would be a good place for the straddle wire carrier height. Secure the pinch bolt of the straddle wire carrier, which will flatten the cable. That's secure. The straddle cable is passed through the carrier. It attaches in the quick release of one arm, and it passes through the pinch mechanism on the other side. Here, the arms are drawn to the rim with mild force as before, and the pad settings are done as with the link unit. On the more sophisticated cable carriers, there may be set screws that help lock the straddle cable to the carrier. Here, if we're off center, it's going to change the centering of the brake. So move the carrier so we have equal distance left and right side, then gently snug the set screws, which will lock the distance and hold it consistent. From here, use the centering screws as before. The simple carriers have no such locking mechanism and they can get bumped off center. Simply push it back till it looks centered, we pull the lever, and that's all there is. With the straddle wire carrier, we have two wires to cut and trim. The primary cable should never be cut so long it could ride on or interfere with our tire. So we want to cut this a bit shorter and then bend it up out of the way. We get that an end cap. And then we crimp it. So that's not going to be a problem. Straddle cable as well is too long. We trim this one. We get an end cap. and a crimp. These can often be tucked up in and out of the way. And that concludes the process for brake caliper mounting and adjustment. 
If you're looking for help on a different procedure relating to rim brakes, we've got a whole series. And watch this video for an explanation how we've organized our rim brake video content. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for the latest from Park Tool.